Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service today. It's a joy to be able to meet together like this and to worship the Lord today. Grace and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've come to worship and praise today on this day of uh, All Saints Day celebration. I guess you could put it that way. We are celebrating the saints. We are thinking about those and honoring them who have gone before us uh, into eternity. We're on this side of eternity, and we miss those who have gone before us. And we do uh, know that we will be reunited in the Lord again, and um, it's going to be a wonderful reunion. So we, we do come together to honor those who have gone before us today, and we are going to have a little bit of a candle lighting time. If you are joining us outside of our church service, um, you're welcome to get a candle, and you are welcome to light a candle when I, um, I mention it later, so we will let you know then when that happens. But I do welcome you all. My name is Pastor Brian Kaminsky, and I'm join, uh, leading us in our service today. And I, I welcome you all, and I pray that your day is going well. I pray your past week uh, was fine, and, you know, troubles do come, as Jesus said. Uh, we will have trouble in this world, but we can thank God and praise the Lord and take heart because the Lord has overcome the world, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I pray that your week to come is twice as good, at least, as your last week. So, But I do pray you're having a good Sunday, and I pray that uh, you're getting some rest and relaxation. It's been a busy time. We're starting to get into the holiday season. Can you believe it? It's almost time for Advent, and uh, that's uh, coming up pretty soon. It's coming up in, well, it's a month, but still, it's right around the corner. And I uh, hope you had a safe and fun Halloween for those who do celebrate Halloween. I know we do over here. We, um, we had pumpkin carving. So thank you for those who got involved, who've given your time and your um, resources to help with that. Uh, we uh, had a successful trick or treat uh, on the day of Halloween. And we also had lots of donations, lots of pumpkins that were given away, lots of candy. And uh, But the best thing, we gave out little slips of paper that on the candy we attach it said Jesus loves you and so we're just reminding the uh, people that the Lord loves them and where church is a positive experience and it's a great place to come for fellowship and everything else so anyhow I uh, just welcome you again let's get into our service here we'll start with our call to worship today we praise the Lord for the lives of those who have come before us, for their ministries and the influence they have had on us. Let us also praise the Lord for allowing us to be a part of this body of believers. Amen to that. Well, that wasn't our call to worship. I apologize. That was our centering words. Now, now we'll get into our call to worship. We'll put it up on the screen for you. Here we go. We have come to affirm our historic faith, to worship the God of our mothers and fathers. We have come to remember God's benefits to us, the living, to respond in thanksgiving to the mighty works of God in our lives. We have come to affirm our trust in the God of all futures, to whose name be blessing and honor, glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Will you please pray with me? I have it up on the screen here for you. Heavenly Lord, on this day of remembrance, we gather to honor those who have gone before us. We thank you for their example of faith and love. 
May their lives inspire us to seek holiness and serve others in your name. Grant us the grace to follow in their footsteps and draw closer to you. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing out this morning our opening hymn, and I thought it was only appropriate. We're going to sing For All the Saints, and we'll have the words on the screen, and we'll play that right now. Let's sing out to the Lord this morning in honor of all the saints. Right, when arms are strong, like these. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, good singing, everybody. I always, I was, I put that song in earlier in the week, and there's a part, I don't know if you caught that lady singing really high. Whoa, I was like, you show off. I'm just, I'm joking. But all those who can sing like that, I'm just kidding. It's amazing. So, well, let's go to our first scripture reading. It is Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all the peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. 
Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. I'm going to just take a moment to back up here for a second. This is interesting. The covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all the nations. It makes me think of when Jesus uh, died on the cross and the sky was darkened and the veil of the uh, innermost of the temple was torn in two. So that covering that was um, covered over all the people that kept people from God is ripped apart and that covering is gone. And now that um, it used to be that, uh, well, I think probably in some places in the world, there is a um, belief that only, you know, you go to the priest and the priest goes to God for you, but that is not how it is. The truth is that uh, God tore the veil and we all have access to the Lord here and now wherever we stand. So I love it. All right, we're going to move on <laughs> to our, uh, well, I guess it's time for me to spout a bunch of words and try to make a message, but I'm, I'm kidding actually. But today it's not going to be that long uh, of a message really because we're taking time to honor the saints and we're going to do some candle lighting. And so I'm going to have um, just a couple of words really quick because uh, today we are celebrating, like I said, the All Saints Day service. And it's a time to honor not only those saints who have, you know, gone before that's not only those saints we're uh, talking about today, but the countless believers who have shaped our faith through the lives and witnesses of their life. So this day invites us to reflect on the nature of holiness and call the call that we receive in our lives as saints in our own time. Whatever calling that might be for us, we are here for one another. We're not here for ourselves, just as Christ came, not to be here for Christ. Christ didn't come. Jesus didn't come to serve himself or have us serve him. He came to set an example and serve for us to reach out. And that's why we're here. You know, we all need time to rest. We all need time to uh, relax and um, just have some alone time. Jesus did that too. But our main goal and purpose in this life is to lift one another up, to reach out and help others. Uh, we we got to do this together. We can't, uh, we're not an island. We're the body of Christ. But anyway, it's interesting when we think of the word saint, it invokes that image, though, of a perfect person, right? Or somebody who's always kind, always giving, always thoughtful of others, always sacrificial of their time and their energy. And we've all known people like that in our lives. And usually those people are the ones that probably think that they're never doing enough. Or they say things like, you know, if they only could see inside my head, they would see how imperfect I can I am or can be. Or if they only knew my past. And that's why I love that well-known saying, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Well, I'm not going to talk um, too much about um, all that today because I want to reserve that time to honor our loved ones with the lighting of the candles. But I just want to share this one little story. And it's of a man who had a lot of questions. And so the Lord himself temporarily allowed this man to visit heaven. So now I want you to imagine for a moment, if you could, that heaven was in the shape of a sphere. Okay? A round ball, essentially. So here's the shape of heaven. And the Lord is located at the very center of heaven. Now imagine this man got to visit heaven and had the chance to visit three people there in heaven. And the first person that he visits is on the outermost edge of the sphere of heaven. And so the second would be halfway toward the center. And the third person would be right there next to the center, right close to the center there, closest to the Lord. Now this man visiting heaven goes to the first person in the outer sphere on the outer edge. And they ask, and he asked them, what did you do to make it into heaven? You're living on the most outer skirts of heaven. So what got you into heaven? Well, they, they answered him and said, you know, I've done the things I was supposed to do. I kept the commandments. 
I've tried to serve my neighbor the best of my ability. Well, the man wasn't fully satisfied with that answer, and so he found somebody else halfway toward that second person, halfway toward the center of heaven, even closer to the Lord, and asked them, so what made you worthy to be here and have this glorious existence? And they told him, I wouldn't be here except for the grace of God. I'm here because of God's grace, and it's not because I'm so worthy, believe me. Well, feeling a little better about that answer, he went to the third person living right near the center of heaven, right there near the Lord, the source of love and wisdom and all his glory. And so he asks that person, what was it that enabled you to be here toward the center of heaven? What is it about your life or was was it about your life that allows you to live in this celestial realm so close to the Lord himself? And they said, I'm here entirely out of the Lord's mercy. And that's it. And so the man says, but I don't understand. I always thought mercy is reserved for sinners. The king gives mercy to the thief. Why are you here because of mercy? Are you not a good man? Do you not keep the commandments? Did you not love the Lord and love your neighbor? And the man said, The person said, I'm a myself, I'm a miserable sinner, and I know that. I know myself well enough to realize that all of the things that proceed from myself are false and evil. And even when I do good, that too is from the Lord and his mercy. The Lord loves me in all my states and loves me enough to allow me to know the difference between good and evil. He gives me the power to shun evils and do good. But all of this is not because of what I am, but because of what God is. My friends, we will never be perfect. There is only one that is perfect. And that one is the Lord. Perfect in love and mercy. So on this day, we recognize that we are part of a larger community the community of saints and of sinners. We are connected not only to those who have passed, but also to one another. And as we walk together in faith, we encourage each other to grow in holiness, uplift one another on this journey to join our loved ones in the promised land. As we embody the love of Christ in our families, our neighbors, and our world. Amen. And at this time, let's take a moment to, I'm going to play some reflective music for a moment. Um, If you're in a church, you may want to stop this and then you can get right into the candle lighting. You just um, come forward and light a candle. And if there's a bell ringer there, they'll ring the bell for that. You speak the name, light the candle and they'll ring the bell and, um, We'll just light candles for our loved ones, and we'll have some reflective music in the meantime. So we'll go on with that. Uh, I'm going to start as that's being set up, and I'm going to start with my own candle to represent for myself, my sister Jennifer, and my father, James. Amen. Okay, I'm going to pause this for now and allow you to do that. And we'll meet back here in just a few moments.
as we go to our second hymn, I'd like you to please remain seated. So to stay in a um, prayerful and reflective stance. So let's uh, let's sing out this morning uh, as we gather and uh, just you can remain seated as you sing today. Let's go sing that right now. Our second scripture reading today is Psalm 23, and you know, I just want to mention this. I just got back from a funeral. I, I just gave a funeral right before I started the service, and I read Psalm 23, and it really strikes me that when I was a little kid growing up, I would watch movies or see TV, and there'd always be, a, whenever there'd be a funeral scene, they'd always read this Psalm 23. And so it has, you know, people gather around in black, they have, you know, wearing black clothes and um, everybody's crying and the priest is up there talking solemnly, the Lord is my shepherd and there's, it's raining. So every time I thought of this scripture growing up, I just, oh yeah, Psalm 23, that's, that's the death Psalm, but no, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they use that for a certain reason uh, to provide comfort, but uh, it's anything but that. It's a, it's a scripture. It's a description of fulfillment. It's, uh, it's um, a scripture about um, peace and nourishment and protection and everything that the Lord provides for us. And it's a, it's a promise a promise of hope that the Lord will always be there for us and will cause us to lay down in green pastures, whether we like it or not. But anyway, I thought that's very interesting. Anyway, we're going to go to the scripture now. With that being said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. 
He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us sing out the Gloria Patri. Excellent. Uh, we're going to get into our prayer time, and I'm going to put up here, as usual, a reflection of what we pray for. Uh, there's the same things every, uh, I know it's the same every week, but that's what we pray for, illness, those who are experiencing uh, suffering, those uh, who are involved with wars, we all are. I mean, we're in this together. And uh, pray for peace for our country, uh, no matter what the election comes out to be, you know, we're still, uh, we get to, we get to grow together and work together and, um, figure things out together. Hey, we're all in this together, man. So hopefully we can find some sense of unity, even though we don't all agree. It's okay. If we all agreed, how awful would this place be? Uh, this existence would really stink if we all thought the same way. Right? So anyway, it's election time. So we got to pray uh, for those who are um, having a hard time during the season. Okay, also, um, if you have any specific prayers, please put them in the comment section below in this on this video. If you're seeing this on YouTube, we can take that into our nurture time. We pray over that. Uh, and then we, uh, um, if you want to reach out to me, uh, the email will be on this video. So anyway, let's go to our prayer time. We'll take a moment of silence as we look over these items. Loving God, we are incredibly thankful that you are here with us in our prayer time. You are the living God in whom there is no shadow or change. We thank you for the gift of life eternal and for all those who, having served you well, now rest from their labors. We thank you for all the saints remembered and forgotten, for those dear souls most precious to us. Today we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months have died and entered into glory. We praise you, Lord, for their life. We give you thanks for their love and rejoice for them. All is well, and all manner of things will be well. As we continue our lives here in this world, let us clearly recognize what it means to be called the children of God and to know we are to be your saints neither by our own inclination, in our own strength, but simply by the call and the healing holiness of Christ Jesus, our Savior. For it's in his precious name we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. At this time, let us uh, speak together the Apostles' Creed, and as you saw, the words will be up here to read from. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, my friends, uh, we just want to take a moment to quickly thank you for your resources, for all who give to our churches and our ministries. We thank you for all you've done for us, and we you do so much uh, to uh, spread God's word, the good news, and we thank you for that. Let's sing over the offering this morning. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the And as you can see here, our hymn of promise is our final hymn and closing hymn. So if you're in a congregation, please rise on your feet or in your heart or both. And we'll sing out our closing hymn today, hymn of promise. Here we go.
Well, my friends, wonderful, wonderful to worship with you today, and it has been a joy to be able to honor our saints together, and I just a blessing to be with you, and I hope and pray that you are well. I look forward to seeing you very soon. At this time, go into the world as the living body of Christ, bringing eternal life to all who seek God's face. Amen. Amen. My friends, love you. See you soon. I miss you all, and I'll see you soon, I hope. So God bless you. Take care now. Bye-bye. Yeah.